Hi, I'm Felisa, and this vlog entry is a follow-up to a blog entry that I did about the silent treatment and dating a narcissist, etc., etc. And the reason that I wanted to do this vlog is because I received a couple of inboxes and an inbox that I didn't even know that I had, so I'm sorry about that. But um, at any rate, one in particular uh, email raised a couple of questions that I wanted to just bring about some clarity and perhaps give a, pers a different perspective about that. So here we go. Okay, so as I stated before in a previous vlog um, about the silent treatment, the silent treatment, and how that is a manipulative uh, tool that people use in order to control you, and that it's childish and it's disruptive and it does harm to your psyche. Um, but beyond that, uh, one of the perks and benefits that the narcissist receives from that, or the person that uses that receives from that, is a stroke of their ego because you're constantly trying to reach out to them, constantly trying to communicate with them constantly trying to see what's going on, what's wrong, what did I do, and you're taking all of the blame for their behavior, but furthermore, you keep chasing them, and that's what they like. They like for you to be desperate. They like for you to beg. They like for you to sit and wonder what happened when you didn't do anything, and you're trying to fix a problem that you didn't create. So my first suggestion is stop chasing them, and I know that that's difficult, and I personally have experienced that. I hate to be ignored. That is one thing that drives me completely insane and I think that if you speak to most women or just most people nobody likes to be ignored nobody likes to feel like they're being taken for granted nobody likes to know that they send a text message just an innocuous text message and it's just being completely overlooked and you just did not find the time in the 24 hours that you're given in a day to even answer me it makes you feel like nothing and it destroys your self-esteem so you send more text messages or more emails or what have you but the narcissist enjoys that. The person who needs their ego to be fed, they enjoy that. They get off on that. And then if they have established another relationship with someone, or maybe if they haven't, just the idea that you're still somehow waiting for them, that you're still somehow on pause, on hold, that feeds into their sense of power and entitlement and control because even if things don't work out or they can't find someone in six months, eight months, a year, they can come back to you and you'll still be there for them. That is something that you know, you've know you got to really get a handle on because you're feeding the machine when that happens. Furthermore, it does not make you feel good. You continuously wonder why they treat you that way. And the long, not even the long, the short answer to that is because you let them. You allow them to treat you that way. You allow them to have access into your life and disrupt it in a way that is not healthy or wholesome for you. You There is nothing good that's going to come from that. That's why I always recommend that you cut off communication and even if it's briefly I had to do that for a period of probably about four or five months just no contact because it wasn't healthy you know there were some things that he was saying that gave me hope and even after all of this time just made me feel like oh maybe he's coming around maybe he's coming to sense I know the boy lost his mind so maybe he found it again that's not the case. Whatever was happening with him is still happening with him. But for whatever reason, he just enjoys being able to string me along. And unless I get a handle on that, and unless I really say, yeah, no, I'm, I'm worth more than that, he's going to continue to do that. So now, is it his fault or is it my fault? Is it the person that's doing that to you or is it your fault that you continuously allow them to have access into your life? You allow them to continuously create chaos and difficulty and psychological torment for you. Stop giving them access into your life. Stop giving them a reason to destroy you. That's number one. Number two, I think that for someone who believes and feels and, and acts in such a way, relationships are clearly the last thing on their mind. Stop trying to create a project. Stop trying to save everyone. You know, there was a song years ago, Captain Save Them, and I'll won't say what the rest of it is but those of y'all who know what it is y'all know what it is but you can't save everybody you're not anyone's savior you didn't die on a cross for anyone you didn't lay down and die for anyone and you shouldn't you there's no redemptive value in your blood there's no redemptive, redemptive value in the sacrifices that you make a sacrifice of yourself in order to save this person and what are you saving them from what, how, what is it that you can do differently to keep them from destroying themselves? They're not destroying themselves. They're destroying you by virtue of the fact that they can't seem to get themselves together and they cannot commit. They're not going to be able to commit because they're not relationship-minded. Then the third thing is you have to come to this difficult truth. If that person really wanted to be with you, they would. If that person really wanted to marry you or 
create a, a lasting life with you, they would. There is no barrier that would keep them from that. And even if there were, they would not play games with your heart that way. The fact that they continue to play games with your heart, the fact that they continue to run hot and cold, yes or no, and continue to string you along is because they do not want a relationship with you. And that is probably the hardest and the most bitter pill to swallow, but it's the truth. You've got to accept that. They are not doing it because they're afraid of relationship. They're not doing it because they're afraid of commitment they're, and whatever other foolish things that we tell ourselves, especially women. We tell ourselves that if we could just do this, do that, if we could just be better, if we could just go longer, if we just cook, if we could just... There's nothing that you can do. You are a human being. Everything that you've given to this person, you've given them already. There's no more left to give. And if they have not come to the conclusion that you are the one... Nothing you do from this point on is going to convince them of that. Stop deluding yourself into thinking that you could just be this perfect person and they would somehow come to their senses. The last thing is this. They aren't denying their feelings for you. And even if they are, that's a child's game. Do you really want to be with someone that you got to convince them that they even like you? That you have to convince them that you're even the one for you? For them, excuse me. That doesn't seem like that's a good thing to do it. I don't want to be with someone that I have to convince them. I have to be on a, a politicking mission to, to help them understand that I'm great, that I'm fabulous, that I add value to their lives. If they don't really own, if they don't already know that, what is it that I'm going to do that's going to convince them otherwise? People know when they have great people that come into their lives. People also know whether or not this is a person that they want to spend the rest of their lives with. I'm convinced of that. I think especially the older that you get, especially into your 40s and, and later on, if you have not figured out by now what it is that you want in a mate, and that person comes along and for whatever reason you reject that person, you don't want that person, shame on you. Let that person go so that they can find someone that really and truly wants to be in a relationship, really and truly desires to be married so that they can be on the same page. Stop playing games with people. And if you happen to have someone that you are spending all this time and all this effort and all this energy trying to convince them that they should be with you, you are wasting your time. You are on a fool's mission. It is not going to work. And even if it does, ask yourself at the end of the day, what prize have you really won? What have you really gained where you had to jump all these hurdles and hoops just to convince someone of your value? That doesn't sound like that's a great thing. Maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong. But I just wanted to come and say that because I know what it feels like to continuously chase someone and chase someone and, you know, ask them, you know, what's wrong, what's going on. Put yourself in a situation where they continue to feed you bits of hope and bits of, you know, just stringing you along. Oh, you know, I really, I care about you and I, no. Sometimes that's not enough. And you have to understand that it's not enough. But if you continuously to if you continue to accept that, then that's all that you'll ever get. And you'll never find anyone who will love you wholly and comprehensively the way that you deserve to be loved. I don't know, just my two cents, but I did want to say that. I'm Felisa. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch y'all later on. Bye!